Hi, I'm Eric Kimball. I'm from Planet Whizbang, and I'm standing here today in front of my Whizbang chicken scalder. I invented this tool in the spring of 2004, used it that year, and in the winter of 2005, I published this book. It's a plan book, tells you exactly how to make this chicken scalder, step by step. Everything you need to know is in this book. And today, I'm going to give you an overview of how this scalder is put together and how it works. This is a remarkable tool. tool. Okay, so um, I'm going to get behind the camera now and I'm going to show you what I got here. All right, here we are looking at the Whizbang Chicken Scalder from several feet away. This gives you an overview of the unit. You can see it's quite tall, and it's tall because it has an auto dunker on it. The uh, auto dunker is something I'll show you in more detail shortly. Uh, right now, I just want you to see that it does make the unit tall. Most people who have built a Whizbang chicken scalder, according to my plans, have not built it so tall. They've left out the auto dunker. Uh, as neat as the auto dunker is, it's not the uh, greatest feature of this scalder. The greatest aspect or feature that this scalder has going for it is that it is efficient heater. It heats up quick and it holds heat and it maintains a four degree temperature range automatically. And uh, so there you see the, sc the scalder from a few feet away. Okay, so here we are looking at the scalding tank which is made out of a 40-gallon propane-fueled water heater. It is 20 inches outside diameter, 18 inches inside diameter. There is one inch of foam insulation all the way around. The tank is cut down. The chimney, the center, center chimney of the tank, is, is left taller. That serves to guide the dunking gondola and direct heat up well away from the water level in the tank. Um, water heaters are incredibly efficient because they, the, the heat is directed up a chimney and in which there is a baffle which slows the exit of hot gases down and, and, and the heat is distributed to the water through this central chimney. Even though the flame for this unit is on the bottom. Very little of the heating action takes place on the bottom. Most of it is up through this chimney. That's kind of interesting. The, uh, these, these rubber gaskets and these handles here, totally unnecessary. Wish I hadn't done that. Um, and it, were I to make this again, I certainly wouldn't do that. They're, they're not needed. This ratchet strap right here connects in the back to the framework and holds that tank very nicely. You can see so you see the wheels on the frame. I can tip this unit back and roll it really easily wherever I need to roll it. Um, the one other thing about this that I want to say is the interior of the tank and the surface of the chimney are porcelain enamel. Uh, they call it glass lined. That's what it is. It's a layer of glass uh, glazed right on there. It's a uh, extremely durable and easy to clean surface which is what you want to have in a chicken scalder. In the bottom of this tank, I've added a layer of concrete, just a thin layer. The bottom of these um, water heaters is not normally flat. It's kind of bowed or curved or concave or convex. Um, convex, I guess, is the word. <laughs> and with the way that they're designed, with that convexity and the position of the uh, drain, it's, it's almost impossible to drain all the water out of it. So by raising the surface up and making it a flat concrete uh, bottom there, uh, I can clean this out pretty easily, real easily. With a spray hose, it's directed right out. There's a hole right there, drain hole. I'll show you that from the back. Got a full port ball valve on, it drains quick. We're looking at the dunking gondola here. 
that's where the chickens are attached before they automatically go up and down on their dunking journey. The gondola consists of a four inch piece of galvanized pipe that surrounds the uh, chimney, keeps everything centered as it goes up and down. The chickens clip onto these clips, their legs clip onto these clips like so, feet up, head down, their uh, backs against this, not the fronts, the backs against this. And after their feet are clipped in, these wires secure their feet in the, in the little shackles, I guess we could call these. Now these clips here, they're actually broom clips, I, I think, um, are my one really big disappointment with this tool. They work, they especially work with this wire, but I was hoping that they would dependably work without the wire that I could just clip the chicken's feet in and that would be, that would be it. But, you, but and, and sometimes it is, it is sufficient, but then sometimes as they go down in the water and come up, their feet flop out. So these little clips are necessary. I have a feeling if I really looked into it, I could find a better clip for their feet. Okay, so got room for three chickens. This is, as I said earlier, 18 inches interior di diameter. This will hold about any chicken you can raise. It'll hold small turkeys too, but it won't hold big turkeys. And that's why I call this a chicken scalder. It'll hold a, it'll hold a big chicken. That's, uh, it may not look like it, but it does, but trust me. So, okay, so the gondola holds the chickens and I'll, sh I'll show you the uh, pathway here up. You have these chains at the top of the gondola. They come together. You have a cable and the cable goes up to a pulley, two pulleys actually, that is on this uh, board that hangs out over the scalder. You see that the cable goes back to that pulley and then it comes down to the dunking arm. Uh, which, as I will show you momentarily, goes around and around. Oh, look, we have a chicken feather. The dunker arm on the end of the dunker arm is an inline skate wheel that allows uh, things not to get tangled. And um, so I'm going to turn this on and show you how this dunks, uh, how this arm goes around. Back here, and I'll show you in a minute, is a gear motor that controls the speed of this thing. Now to turn it on, we have a, give you a little peek here, switch. Okay, here we go. Here you can see the gondola going down. It stays down for a couple seconds and up. And your chickens uh, ride this thing until they are sufficiently scalded. And we know when they're sufficiently scalded because when the gondola comes up, as you see there, that gives us time to select one of the large wing or tail feathers and give it a little tug. If the feather does not slide out, the bird's not sufficiently scalded. When, when enough dunks and enough exposure to the hot water have occurred, that one large feather from the tail or the wing slides out effortlessly, stop everything, and uh, the bird is scalded, the birds, plural, are scalded and you can pluck them. That's how we test. The ground around the plucker is, or the scalder I should say, is usually littered with large test feathers that we've pulled uh, during the scalding process. But that's, that's the dunker. I have turned the chicken scalder around so that we can see the back of it and have better light than was otherwise the case. The, I'm going to go over each part of this, but first I want to focus on the uh, gear motor. This is a 6 RPM gear motor. This is an expensive piece of equipment. This is the reason, the cost of this, why many people do not make the auto dunk. This, uh, of course, requires electricity. So one cord comes in to uh, 
uh, the unit and feeds the electronics and it feeds this gear motor. That, the gear motor just sits there, does a very good job, just churns away six RPMs and uh, turns that dunking arm. Now underneath the shelf with the gear motor on it, directly underneath is a 24 volt transformer right there on an electrical box. Pretty simple, that is necessary to step the power down to the electronic temperature controller and the gas valve. Okay, what we're looking at right here directly in front of us, this box, is the electronic temperature controller or ETC. This thing is the brains behind this unit. It tells the uh, gas valve and the burner what to do. And this ETC, uh, you set the temperature. It senses the temperature. Right now the temperature is 74 degrees. That's not the temperature of the water in the tank because there's no water in the tank right now. It's sensing the temperature of the air in the tank. But in any event, that senses the temperature at the bottom of the tank and I'll tell you how it does that in just a moment. But you also set this tool, this device, this electronic control to the desired water temperature you want. And, uh, and it will hold, once it gets up to heat, it will hold that temperature within a four degree temperature range and it will control your gas. It does everything. It makes scalding easy because you don't have to fuss with the scalder. You just get this thing turned on, get the gas running, get the pilot light on the burner going, and you leave this thing and it will maintain temperature all day long. It's amazing. Now, the way it senses temperature is by means of this cord right here, which is comes it's got plenty of cord here, it coils around and comes down, I'll show you where it goes. It goes right into here. Now this is an immersion well, and in, in the well is the end of this cord and there's a temperature sensor. I believe it's called a thermistor. And I've sealed around the opening of the well to hold that in there. This immersion well threads into uh, the threads that once held the temperature controller for this water heater. And the reason that that temperature controller for this water heater, the factory temperature controller, is not used is because it, it is in no way capable of maintaining a steady temperature uh, of water. I mean, it just fluctuates wildly. Um, and you want a well-regulated uh, water temperature. Like I said, a four degree temperature range. That's what you want. That's the best I think you can possibly get. And that's what you want when it comes time to scald your birds. Beautifully. Out of the bottom of the electronic temperature controller, we have wires that hook to the, four wires that hook to the gas valve, which is what I'm gonna show you next. We're down to the gas valve now. This is, uh, directly below the ETC. This gal uh, gas valve is another amazing piece of equipment. The gas comes in here. This, pro uh, this is either for natural gas or propane. I've got it set up for propane. You can see the, this uh, regulator goes into a regular 20 pound propane tank like you use for your gas grill. The gas comes in here and then the uh, valve lets the gas out here when it knows that it can do so safely and this goes all the way down into the uh, pipe that goes to the burner and I'll show you the burner here in a minute but uh, there are other uh, things that come off of this gas valve like for example this thing right here this is a um, oh shoot what do you call this it goes down, it senses that the pilot light is on. And uh, it's a thermocouple, that's the word I'm looking for. The thermocouple goes down 
right next to the pilot flame down under here. I'll show the end of you the end of it. There we go. Uh, and senses that the pilot is on. It's a safety feature. That tells this gas valve the pilot is on. It's safe to let fuel through when needed. This other pipe coming out, this tube, I guess, would be more accurate description, uh, is what is what feeds gas to the pilot light down underneath. Okay, I've, I had a little wire here that went around this pipe and held the burner in place. There's a little socket it fits into there, but the wire just um, secured it from you know making sure it stayed there. This is a cast iron burner. My understanding is that propane uh, burners used to be all cast iron. Now they're not, but whatever the case, this is the burner. Flames come out these holes all around the perimeter of the burner. The part I want to really show you is right here. This is the pilot light. Uh, the, the tube I showed you allows a little, quarter inch tube allows a little bit of gas. And you can use one of these Bic lighters to reach under and uh, light your pilot lights much easier than reaching in with matches, which I did for years. You know, put a match on the end of a pair of pliers and light it and try to put it in there. That bic, that that thing right there is a whole lot easier. Anyway, right here is the uh, thermocouple. The, the, the pilot light comes on. You light the pilot light. It heats up the thermocouple. And once the thermocouple senses that there's sufficient heat there, it tells your gas valve, hey, it's okay, send send the gas down to the burner. Now, I made this scalder in 2004 and used it. It's 11 years old, and this year the thermocouple went bad. See, the I had to replace it. Fortunately, I had one on hand because I uh, had bought an extra when I was designing this thing. So that was like a 15-minute job. You just clip that in and... Uh, that solved it. I knew it needed a thermocouple because I couldn't get the burner to light. And that was the most likely suspect. Now you can see here I've kind of, I had some uh, movement in my pilot light as it relates to the thermocouple and I needed to kind of jerry-rig some wires on here. So there you go, that's what the burner looks like underneath. It fits down into the center. I'll, show, I'll come back to this gas valve and show you the how you control it. And it's pretty simple. Uh, there's a control on the top here. You can see, hopefully this focuses, you can see off, pilot, and on right here. And the way you work this is you turn this to pilot. You press down, and while you're pressing down, you light that pilot underneath. Nothing's gonna happen here because I don't have a gas tank hooked up, even though the electricity is hooked up. So anyway, you hold that down, light the pilot light, let it heat up your thermocouple, and then you would click this over to on. And a few seconds later, you'll hear that burner come on. It's a beautiful sound. It starts heating your water. And then if you uh, don't want to heat the water, you, but you want to keep the pilot light on, you turn this thing back right there. Pilot light's on, ready to go next time you want to start heating up. Like if you, you know, you could leave it on overnight and fire it up the next day if you wanted, but I never do that. That's really not too practical for scalding purposes. And then of course, off when you want to shut the whole unit down. You just turn it to off. That's how that works. All right, just a few more things. There's three things that I haven't showed you that I need to show you. They're kind of like loose ends here to finish this presentation off. One is this right here. This is a full port ball valve that allows the, the tank to drain. Water heaters come with a cheesy plastic valve. It's not a full port and uh, 
you, they don't work. You got to put in a good valve and this water drains out fast and nice. Next I want to show you the back of this ratchet strap. Simple ratchet strap. Comes through a hole. It's over here. Comes through a hole. I used that to strap that water heater on 11 years ago. I haven't touched it since. Does the job very nicely. Here we are looking down into the tank. I wanted to show you that immersion well. It's a copper immersion well that the uh, temperature sensor thermistor threads into. There you see it. And uh, there, there's the drain hole. You can't really see the hole, but you can see how where that where the water exits out the drain there. The last thing I want to show you or mention is these gloves. Wells Lamont PVC coated, nice uh, comfortable gloves, one size fits all. Slip your hands in there. When you're dealing with hot water, those gloves come in real handy hot water and pulling tail feathers out to test the scald. A pair of gloves like that are what you want for sure. So you might be wondering about me showing you some actual chickens being scalded. That was my intention here with this little movie. I was processing chickens here in the backyard last week and I thought it would be an ideal time to show a few chickens in the scalder going up and down being scalded show how to test the scald you know with a feather the big feathers to see that the chicken is scalded properly but the reality of it was that when it came time to do chickens I just wanted to do chickens that's why I don't have chickens actually dunking up and down but uh, believe me this thing does an awesome job hang on I'm gonna tell you about the book anyone can build a whiz bang chicken scalder is a 68 page how-to manual it is profusely illustrated. It tells you everything you need to know to build a chicken scalder just like the one I've showed you in this movie. In addition to that, there's information in the back of the book about how to modify the design so that it will accommodate larger birds like turkeys. You can purchase the book in two different formats. One is a PDF file that you download onto your computer. The other is the traditional paper copy. The PDF file is relatively inexpensive. It's only $10.95. To purchase the PDF file, go to whizbangplucker.com. When you get to whizbangplucker.com, scroll down the page looking at the right-hand column until you come to a picture of the cover of the book, the same picture you're looking at now. Click on that and it'll take you to a web page where you can get the PDF file. If you want a print copy of the book, you can order it from Amazon.com or you can order a copy directly from me. The price is $23.95, postage paid to any U.S. address. To order a copy, go to PlanetWhizBang.com. Scroll down the page when you get there until you see a picture of me standing in front of the scalder. You'll be able to click there and that'll take you to a page where you can order a copy online and I ship them right out. So that's that. Thank you very much.